Hi everyone, it's Linda with Overbrook Quilt Connection. This is day 13 of Moda's Stitch Pink. And we are doing the block called Rock and Roll. A lot of you probably know of this block as the Ohio Star, which is its, I think, pretty common universal name. But they chose to call it Rock and Roll. And so I'm gonna show you how to make it. So there are four quarter square triangles that make up the star in this block. And they are made with four equal sized triangles that are cut from five and a quarter inch squares that you cut diagonally both directions. Um, I chose to use two different fabrics, a light and a dark, but you can mix it up. Um, you can do a light, um, a different light on one side than the other. Um, that would kind of make a little bit of a um, diamond look to the center. Um, you can, anyhow, you can do whatever you want with it. It's your star, but the reason they are cut on the diagonal both ways is because that puts a straight of grain edge on the outside. So these are all biased edges, so just be careful when you sew them. To sew this block together, you will put two, a light to a dark, and you know, they're opposite of each other. The light is on the left and the right, so just make sure you sew them, you know, opposite of each other. Um, you're going to start at the corner and sew out both of those seams, and so then you end up with, um, and look what I did. I made two exactly the same way. I did exactly the opposite of what I just told you to do. So, when I sew this one, I'm going to have to sew it wrong also in order to have correct ones. <laughs> Goes to show we all make mistakes. Okay, this is what the block is supposed to look like when you're done. When you've sewn your two halves together, uh, those seams should nest, which obviously they don't because um, I pressed them all to the dark. And since these are the same way, they don't nest. But anyhow, um, when you sew your halves together, you'll have this kind of bulky seam in the middle. And we've talked about that. We've done these before. So I chose to, um, you know, to unsew a couple of stitches on either side of my seam allowance. Um, I, I unsewed a couple little stitches on the on the first seams that I sewed. So these lay back and they lay in the opposite direction, which takes all that, that bulk out of the center. But there's lots of techniques for that. Some people like to clip those seams and press it open. Some people um, will just press this entire seam open. So, you know, use whatever, whatever technique you want. Um, when you're done, this has to be squared up to four and a half inches. Again, I am using my fussy cut ruler, which I think you can tell that there are crosshatch lines on it. This one's four and a half. Again, um, it comes in the set the quilt in, that Quilt in the Day has, and it's just one of the standard sizes that's in that set. You can, um, if you'd like to get that, you can always contact Amy at um, Overbrook Quilt Connection, and she'll be happy to hook you up. But anyhow, in order to square them up, I'm going to put the, put this ruler on the seam lines, and then that makes the seams go right into the corners. And then I'm going to um, to square this up. And as you can see, I'm just trimming off little bits. Um, the, the little tips um, that are, you know, coming off of the seams um, and little, you know, just little tiny bits. So this come, this makes, it's pretty close to the correct size when you're done stitching it. So I'm going to finish sewing these up and I'm going to fix the one block that I did wrong. And when I have all four of these done, I will come back and show you the next step. I have the four um, 
corners or the four star points made now, the quarter square triangles. And I laid this out and this is what I was talking about at the beginning. I made both of these the same, but you could have this, a, these, a different fabric from these if you wanted. Um, and that would give it a whole different look. You could also put something different in the center and that would give it a different look. So I'm encouraging you to, um, to do your own thing with these blocks. Don't feel like you have to copy, copy what I do or just copy exactly what the pattern does. But these are all now sewn and squared up to four and a half inches. And I've got them laid out with my background and my center. I'm going to sew these all together and then I will come back and show you the finished block. I thought of a couple more tips as I was sewing these together. The, when you're sewing these seams, if you can sew with the piece block on the bottom, because then that's going to allow your feed dogs to deal with any, um, since these are bias seams here, you know, this, those seams kind of want to, um, stretch out if you will. Um, and so if you press it or if you sew it with this on the bottom, then your feed dogs are going to take in any fullness as you go. Also, I, I uh, make sure that my points are really good in where I start and where I stop my seam. The reason for that, a quarter inch from this edge, quarter inch back is where your next seam is going to be and you want it to line up right with the where the point of the darks come in to the to the seam so if if this piece would happen to kind of slide off or you sew a little crooked as you're starting or ending that seam then you can come up with a seam where the this isn't a quarter of an inch sometimes it's less than that or more than that and that's going to affect the look of your star so if you can keep that as straight as possible and keep the the piece block as square into that corner as you can when you start and end your seams you'll have better match points when you put the rows together okay Here's our finished star, and you know, for such a simple design, there this can be kind of tricky sometimes. This these seams when you're sewing your rows together, make sure that your your presser fit doesn't slip a little bit as you're going over these seams, and make sure that they're nested really well. Pin them and make sure that you go slow when you go over those because you have several thicknesses there and sometimes your presser foot will want to kind of slide off. If you, if you have too much room here, you've got room between your point and your seam line, then look at the depth of your seam as it crosses that stitching line. It may have gotten a little bit narrow. So as you can see, I've got two stitching lines right here where I went back and and sewed in just a little bit deeper I had a couple of places where I did that so that's a way to fix you know an issue if it's too deep if your points have disappeared then take a look at it maybe your presser foot maybe your stitch width got a little bit too wide or your stitch the width of your seam got a little bit too wide there um, also, I tend to press the direction that's going to make my points look the best because as you're pressing, you've got a little bit of fabric that's taken up by the seam. So sometimes if one side's a little bit, um, has a little bit of room and the other one doesn't, if you press that way, then sometimes that takes up that little extra room and it looks better. So it's your block and it's your seams and no one else is going to see them unless you show them to somebody to see what you've done 
And if they're looking at the back and analyzing the back too much, they're not really your friend, I don't think. So, unless it's your mother, then you don't have a choice, I suppose. But anyhow, um, try and get these to match as much as you can so that diamond looks real smooth and not, um, and not you know, jagged at the corners. So, this is the Rock and Roll Block 13. And we will see you back tomorrow for block 14. Thank you.